All righty, guys, you are about to watch the opening scene from episode number nine of Playing the Glass Bead Game with myself and Michael Wan. Um, this was a really cool one. Uh, there was a lot of topics touched on. Uh, we talked smells, serial killers, Deborah Harry, Zen tangles, uh, time travel, precognition, rivers, what can happen over the course of one night, and of course, synchronicity. Everything was at play in this one. Uh, enjoy the clip. And if you have not yet joined us at Project Kids, where we play the glass bead game, you can do so uh, on Patreon, on Locals. Uh, how to do so is in the description box. You can also um, buy single episodes. You can do that by contacting me at the email address below. If you haven't received a complimentary episode yet, you can hit me up for that. If you'd like a free visit to the cafe, hit me up for that. And uh, enjoy the clip. We'll see you guys next time. Bye. One. Hey, everybody, welcome back. I'm Emily Moyer. Michael Wan is with me. This is Playing the Glass Bead Game number nine. Michael, how you doing? I am doing well. We're at number nine? Number nine. Nine is like a magic number, right? Yeah. Well, so this has to be a magic show. Totally. This is completely a Tesla show because every after every three bead games, we do a Project Kids. So we do like one, two, three, and then Project Kids, and then four, five, six, and then Project Kids. So Tesla's thing was like three, six, nine, right? He loved that. So we're at number nine. So maybe we're like going to enter into like the replication of people and stuff like Something's that. Something's going to happen. I mean, <laughs> and I'm, I'm going to be honest with you. It's, it's, I'm confused in my own mind. Like I just show up and I talk and I'm like, I'm talking like, this is my time with Emily, but I, and I'm not quite that like sharp on to like, what, what is the name of our talk? So I come in here totally blind. And so when you're telling me that we're doing this like every three and then we do that, I'm like, that's fantastic. And so yeah. like, so this is, this is great. So this is, I, I don't know what we're going to do. It's going to be exciting, but this is it. This is what's special about today because I'm right. always looking for how is it different? You know, what is, you know, the every day is Groundhog's Day. Every day the sun comes up, we go up, we wake and mm -hmm. we go and do our things. So there's like that similarity, but then at the same time, there's like, you know, what is different? And so what is different about today? And I'll tell you what it is about today. And I already told you about this before we started recording. But what I did today, which I've never done before on this show, is because it's such a beautiful day outside. And I always, I always begin this. I think I do always begin. And I mentioned the weather. Yeah. It is like the weather is spectacular today. And all of these flowers, all these beautiful tulips, they're in bloom in my front yard. So I went and I cut some out and I made a little bouquet. And so the bouquet here is what I brought. And so no matter how you want to think about this, you know, I'm part of the environment. This is part of the environment. This goes in my head and it's going to influence. And how's it going to influence? In this way, flowers are beautiful and they smell so good. So yeah. hopefully I'm going to, I'm going to be able to bring some of that energy. Like, I don't know if anyone can smell me. I always try to smell good. But at least I'll try to say something beautiful because I don't know if the smell is going to come through. I like smelling good, too. So this show will be colorful and we will and it will smell good. Right. Well, practice synesthesia. The, the show will be so entertaining that it will produce a scent all of its own. There we go. A quick smell question. What do you think about the natural aroma of the human being? Like, let's say you're like, particularly like you're in a place which is like tropical where like you can't help but like, you know, sweat and like everyone's got a bit of a funk. Like, how do you feel about that? All right. So we've talked about this a little before. I can't remember if we just talked about it in our personal conversation or if it's been on the air. So it sort of depends, right? Like yesterday we were in World Market and there was this dude that was helping us. Like he, he was smelling pungent and big and it was like, he, it was crazy. He worked there. Like, I can't believe they let him work there like that because it was like, takes you into another dimension and not a good one when he comes by you, right? So sometimes somebody has like a, a smell that's unique to them and it's mm -hmm. not overpowering. It's uh -huh. like, you can notice when they're sort of there and it's like subtle and Maybe even at first you're like, what is that smell? But eventually you grow accustomed to it and then you're kind of fond of it. So if it's like that, yes. But if it's something that is like super striking, like, like, and, and, and like pungent, sometimes it can be, it, it can be, um, well, it, it makes me have a lot of questions about what's really going on. Like, are they of the same 
dimension <laughs> and of the same set of like chemicals and biological processes of, of that I am, right? Um, and that can be a good thing or a bad thing when it really just totally takes you out of your reality that can be good or bad, right? Like one of the things you hear a lot is that like serial killers often have a really pungent body odor. And I've, always- I've never heard that in my entire life. You said, oh, one of the things you hear a lot is that the serial killers have a pungent body odor. I've never heard that. Go listen I believe to- it. Go listen to go listen to a read up on like the Night Stalker or Ted Bundy, right? But in both of those cases, like they, that's something that all of the like the pe- victims who survived or people who like happened to know these people would say about them, right? And not just that they had body odor, but they had a really pungent one, right? So I wonder if whatever is creating that odor is also what is creating this desire in them to do what they're doing. Right. Well, it's got to be a reflection, right? It's yeah. got to be a reflection of like, like so many different things. Like part of part of the the aroma which we produce, I think, is a reflection of like what's going on physically in our body, like yeah. how we're digesting and like you know what we're digesting, and then some of it has to be maybe about like the type of consciousness of the individual. Yeah. Um, and so that would make sense with the serial killer, you know, and, and what's interesting, we don't have a really, we don't have a full vocabulary of smells. Right. And so, I mean, we've got whatever we've got, but if the people, you've got a really small percentage of human beings who've been in a circumstance where they have been in the clutches of a serial killer and did not, and did not demise. And so that's a really small number. So we can't assume like they're going to have a very, that those individuals, some individuals probably have a very, um, uh, they've broken down. They understand smells to a greater degree of 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 resolution in the same way some people can do that with colors or with sounds. Um, but my guess is if if that were studied, that there's probably a similarity into like the type of aroma. However, that would be quantified yeah. or maybe it's more subject subject. But uh, that would be interesting. See, I like to smell people. I like because I've always felt like I can. <laughs> You like Joe Biden? <laughs> Not like that. Like we were just about being creepy a little bit earlier in the show. Like I, you know, I'm always aware of how someone smells, and I'm aware of like how I respond to that smell. Um, there's certain smells which are obviously offensive to me. There's certain smells of feet, like you know, mm-hmm. which which you know, I there's no smell of feet which I really care for, which is pungent. There's a certain smell, and it's like there's a a sickly sweet smell, which some people have. And this, I don't know if this is happening, but this is what I picture in my head, that there's like bacteria growing in like a fold somewhere <laughs> and like on, on their dermis, on their dermis. And I'm always like, okay, that that I don't like. But but what's normally categorized as like, you know, like like body odor, like I want to sm- like I if I'm in an elevator, I'm going to I can smell everyone's everyone's body odor and you get a You get a sense. So maybe maybe the I'm going to go full circle. Maybe the whole thing about the serial killer and like the smell and like the consciousness and all of that, like, you know, that's 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 a that's a real thing. And I think uh, well, I think one of the things further so- investigation. Two things. So I have a very good sense of smell. Like people mm-hmm. have suggested that I be the person who like designs perfumes and stuff like that. But you know, there's a, a there's like a career in like perfume, like people who can tell, like they can smell a perfume and pull out all the notes and all the different things, and then like they can, you know figure out how to make perfumes that replicate certain smells in nature or whatever that people like. And like people have recommended that to me before. And what's odd about, so I've always had a really good sense of smell, like really, really good. And it's not, so smell is highly uh, connected to both memory and cognition, right? And um, I I have uh, both good, both of those things as well. But I have this like precognitive smelling kind of thing sometimes, right? Like I can think of two examples that are kind of different. Like one time I was driving up to a friend's house who I'd never been to before. So I was getting close. I was in the neighborhood, but I wasn't sure where I was supposed to turn. I was a few blocks away. So I called him and he told me how to get there. And I said, are you doing laundry? And he was like, yeah, how the fuck did you know? I could literally smell dryer sheets, but I was still a few blocks away. Right. And he was like, why is he using dryer sheets? Does he not know what that is doing to him? All right. Well, 
I, at this, uh, all, all, total honesty here, I was buying methamphetamine from him at the time. So I well, think poisoning you yourself with dryer sheets. You be a dryer sheet user. So I'm going to flip what I just said. If you're in the meth world, you want your you want your meth dealer to have dryer sheets in his pheromonal composition. So all yes, right. okay. So so that's a good indication. So that one. So then also, like sometimes I can smell people things on people's breath before they've eaten them. Like one time a friend of mine really smelled like broccoli. And I asked him, I was like, did you eat broccoli? He's like, nah, dude. But like, I, yeah, you know, I bought some of there. It's in the refrigerator. I was thinking about cooking it for dinner tonight. Right. So that was kind of interesting. Mm -hmm. And then I, my dog was very interesting with telepathy and smell. Right. My dog loved radishes. I had a little Yorkie. His favorite food in the whole world was radishes. And he was funny with them. He'd like sort them. He'd put some over here and save them for later. Some over here and eat them now. He seems to like the ones that were crunchy and spicy the most. And he'd eat them first and save the other ones for when there was none of those left and whatnot. But if you put a piece of steak and a radish out for them both, he'd eat them both, but he'd go for the radish first. That was his favorite thing. Right. He was so into radishes that if I even thought about radishes, he'd start barking. Like I could be sitting on the couch watching TV thinking, all right, I'm getting kind of hungry. I think I'll make a salad. I'll put cucumbers in it, in my head, right? Radishes. The moment I had the thought radishes, woof, right? Like mm. it was crazy. So smell and mental like processes and whatnot like that are very, very connected in a number of ways. I actually think that, um, I don't know if part of how you get pulled into programs is part of this, you have a, a, a really good sense of smell or if it's something that they help you foster, right? Like one of the things that's heavily used in programming and we've talked about this before is like wolf programming, right? And wolves like smell shit out, right? Like they're completely ruled by, by set, scent and sound, right? And I feel like that was something that was instilled in us like deeply and, and to, to be able to know where you are and like what your danger level is based on scent and sound. That makes sense. Like if I were to go and if I was looking, if I, you know, if I were to run a program like that, I would put like some candidates in a room and then you like, you put the smell, you know, you have the smell, which you know what the smell indicates and you start putting it in the room and you see who notices it. Who mm -hmm. are the ones who notice it? And that's like part of like the, yep. the, the, the process of identifying them. Yep. Uh, I know I'm still hung up on the broccoli thing. I find broccoli, the smell of broccoli offensive. 